Hello and welcome to another video from RL. In this video we're going to show you how to uh, make some enhancements to the old uh, Hornby HSTs. Um, here we have an old Hornby HST from the uh, late 70s, early 80s and you can get these on eBay pretty cheaply uh, usually for under, and under 25 pounds for a good working set and uh, usually they come in a couple of different numbers. Uh, this one's 43 010 and 43011 and they also came in uh, 43002 and 43003 in pairs and um, these aren't, aren't bad locomotives they're not as, as super detailed as the uh, the newer ones but you can make uh, a couple of minor uh, improvements to it that, that makes it look an awful lot better so um, first of all you're going to need a couple of supplies for this um, particular modification um, first of all you're going to need uh, some uh, wet kitchen tile just to uh, clean the locomotive off. Uh, you're also going to need a couple of permanent markers, uh, the fine kind. Here I have one in black and one in red, and I'll explain what those are for shortly. Um, you're also going to need to get some uh, microfine applicators. Uh, these are basically um, used for for um, hobbies and crafts and so on, and basically they're just like a felt end. On a, uh, on a regular brush so it's pretty small. Uh, you can also find these at some car places because um, they use them for filling in minor scratches with the touch-up paint so that you don't leave the, the big globs of touch-up paint on the bodywork of your car. And uh, these are pretty cheap. I got like a pack of 10 or something for $1.99. And uh, I think they're called uh, applicators and this particular size is super fine. And here's actually the the brand that we use, the micro brush. I got these at Hobby Lobby. Um, then you're going to use a series of paint. Um, the probably easiest thing to use is one of these paint pens. Um, this is actually to put the uh, kind of chrome, aluminum, silver kind of tint around the uh, lens, light lens on the front of the HST. Um, it's actually easier and more precise to use one of these, or you can use the microfiber micro applicator with either an aluminum colored paint or a silver colored paint and uh, they pretty much work the same. Uh, you're also going to need some black paint and then if you don't want to do the uh, LED work to do the directional running lights you're going to need some uh, some red paint and we'll explain what that's for later on. And that's uh, that's pretty much it. So um, I'm going to show you. This is a standard HST, and it's one I got straight off of eBay. And you can see there, there's new new um, detailing or anything like that on it. And so basically, what we're going to do is we're going to paint the seals here around the cab window black. We're going to paint the windscreen windshield wiper or windscreen wiper black. And behind the light lens here, we're going to pop the light lens out and paint the plastic area behind that black. And then we're going to paint the rim of this uh, light lens silver. So um, I can show you one that I've done already so you can get an idea of it. And it's pretty tricky, so um, it can take a few attempts to get it properly. Um, but basically, you just want to paint along the outside edge there to get that kind of silver look on it. Uh, now, if you look at the front of the HST, there's a little square here in a circle, and uh, this is actually red, and it's a little bit further out on the newer models, but if you look at the HST, they basically just molded it wrong, so uh, we're gonna color that red just to keep it consistent. We're also going to uh, put the uh, this little seal edge around here, and also paint that black. Um, we're gonna paint uh, this section here, these uh, grills here, uh, silver uh, or or coming a gray color. Then we're going to take the uh, permanent marker here and fill back in the lines black. And the reason I'm doing that is I actually look at some of the photos. You can see that these are actually are aluminum, and they're being weather them later on. Now these are also aluminum, but um, in operation they become almost straight back black pretty quickly, and it's not really much of a point. Um, taking these and trying to make them silver and or aluminum colored and, and then uh, try to dull them up later. 
Um, what else we're going to do is uh, there's a seal around the back windows here. I was going to paint those black. And then there's a, a little rail here that's actually supposed to be kind of a darker black or aluminum kind of color. And it's uh, just painted blue on this model. And so um, that's basically all we're going to do with this particular model. And then once that's done, um, you have a couple of different strategies, um, whether you want to renumber it or weather it or, or so on. So with this particular model, it's got some uh, some damage on the side and so on. So we're actually going to um, weather it pretty heavily. And most HSDs weren't really that dirty, and most of them were pretty clean. But um, from time to time, they they go through some some hard weather, and it would look um, pretty dirty. So I've actually already weathered and done this sort of power car end. And as you can see here, it makes uh, quite a bit of difference if I uh, put this beside it. Um, you can see just here on the front alone, the black makes it more predominant and the, the red and so on. But the weathering looks pretty good. So um, here you can see um, we already did the outline, painted this red. Painted the black here, black, and uh, you can see the roof detail there has got that silverish kind of tinge to it. And then we weathered it up as well as doing the pen, so it looks pretty realistic. Did the uh, usual streaks here from the from the dirt and so on. And as you can see there from the front, we added um, not only the seal but the windshield wiper uh, grime and so on. You can see there we also weathered the front of it pretty heavily. And we did that because we didn't want to renumber it, but we wanted to use it as a, a different logo. And then let's flip it around on the other side. And as you can see there, this is actually my first attempt at weathering, so it uh, didn't turn out too badly. And I'll explain how we did that as well later in the video. But um, that's basically um, the end result we're going for. So this is actually the uh, the power car end, and this is the um, original. So you can see there the end result. If I pan this down, is uh, it's quite different. You can see there the just the change to the front of it makes it a lot better looking and closer to what it looked like in uh, in reality. Okay, so we're gonna go next and uh, walk you through the steps. Okay, so the first step, uh, we need to clean this up. So, I'm just going to take this and uh, clean it up as best as we can. Uh, try not to get any uh, kitchen towel remnants on the, uh, on the model. Man, it's just dusty from being stored in uh, somebody's loft or. Bedroom and so on. And we have a little one just to dry it up. There you can see it looks uh, a lot cleaner than it did a few minutes ago. So the next thing we have to do is to open it. So the next thing we need to do is open it and basically there's just a uh, couple of clips. There's uh, one here at the front, one here at the back, right there, and there's one on the back here. So very simply we're just going to uh, pull it apart. Big trick with it, you just uh, get your fingernail under it and make sure you hold it up. See, there it's starting to come apart. And you just 
before I get to Dan. Flip it over on the other side. Make sure you've uh, also popped it out here. And this one probably hasn't been opened. It's a dummy car, so it's likely to be a little stiffer than the other one. So, so for now we're going to leave this alone, but what we're actually going to do is reverse the polarity on this later on and color the lens red, but for now we're just going to set this aside. So this is the, uh, the body shell, um, there's some glass down here we're going to leave alone, glass up here that we're going to leave alone, but right in here there's the uh, two lenses and we're going to push those out. You just want to do this very gently. You can see there, the lens cover comes off pretty easily. So we're actually going to paint in here black, around the rim here black, and around here, not the door, just the front part here, and the front part here black. And then we're going to um, coat this with some silver, or aluminum color. So I'm going to set this aside for now. And we're going to go work on um, painting this black. And this is pretty straightforward. We're going to take one of these applicators and some flat black paint. So I'm going to shake this up a bit. It's a little trickier to do this on the camera, so bear with me. I'm take an old applicator and just stir up the paint. And so this is pretty straightforward. You just have to be careful when you do this. You want very little amount of paint. So you just brush this off like so. And you're going to run it around the rim here. You're going to use as little paint as possible. See there, we did get a little bit over, so we're just going to use the paper towel to clean that up. Like That's pretty much all you have to do with that. So I'm gonna fill this in here black. So dip it in. And I get a little bit out. So. Clean up 
paint it off like so. Okay, so now you can see we've got that painted black. And what we're going to do is take this paper clip and just run the paper clip through the two light holes so that they don't get sealed up with paint. So you can see there, do that like so. And then likewise with the other one. And then what we have left to do are the two window sills here. Window seals. Put that in again. Very carefully. Run it down the side like so. And to do the windshield wiper after you've gotten a windscreen wiper, you want to be very careful with this. Put minimal paint on it, like so. It's uh, pretty easy to do. And then we'll flip it around and finish off the last piece right here, which is. That's basically it with the black paint. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, paint this here silver. And it is pretty straightforward. I'm going to put the uh, applicator aside. Yeah. Actually, we're going to line the back windows too, so let's do that. It's important to realize that the um, even if you don't do a 100% perfect job with this black paint, you can mask any mistakes with the uh, with the weathering. Um, here we're gonna clean this up with a paper towel because we got some on the glass. So another way to clean up uh, some mistakes is with the cotton buds. So here I'm just gonna clean up this mask that we made. Dries. And there you go. And of course, like I said, we'll clean the rest of it up with weathering. So just to recap, we uh, painted out black, added the uh, seal and the windshield wiper, seal around that window, seal around that window, See a little around the back window, so that wasn't such my finest work, but we'll fix that with some weathering. And then seals on the side. And so the next thing we're going to do is, uh, real quick, we're going to do the uh, silver paint up here, or the probably go with the the gray paint. It's a little duller. Um, so we got the flat gray. There's the gray paint. And then we're just going to use the micro applicator to get that on there. 
and it's pretty straightforward. You just uh, run the paint like that. I'll make sure it gets well mixed now. Like I said, you don't have to be too worried about this being neat because it's going to all be weathered. You're just looking for to get the tinge. You can see there, I'm not even getting it completely covered. So, and that is basically it. And if you wanted to do the uh, red stuff on the side, you simply uh, hold it over like that, get the marker, and in here just draw it in real quick. On the outside, you want to paint the circle on, and then flick it over, do the same thing here on this side. Like so. Alright. So that's basically uh, the first rain side of it. So what we're going to do is going to let this dry and then uh, we'll move on to making a few other small minor adjustments and then weathering it. Okay, so we're going to go and uh, color the um, light lens here with this uh, silver pen. I'm just going to touch it down a few times to get the paint flow. And that is basically it. And finally, to uh, complete this, we're going to go take some of this red paint and uh, paint the light diffusers here um, red. Uh, we're doing this because we're actually going to run this just in one direction. We're not going to fit this particular HST with a um, with directional lighting. So um, it's quite simple. Just uh, dip that in the red. And like so. And what this will do is when the LED or the, the light's on with the bulb, it'll actually glow red in reverse. So we're going to switch to polarity so that it always does that. <coughs> okay, so next up we're going to um, let this dry and then go ahead and weather it. A couple hours have passed. Um, most of the paint is dried. And so here we have the uh, Power car that we've done previously. Did you uh, see that again? Okay, so um, what we're going to do now is reassemble the um, this and then go ahead and weather it. So, um, 
paint has dried, so the first thing we're going to do is take the black sharpie and like I said, for this we're just going to um, fill this in with the black sharpie and the reason we're doing this is just to add back in and just any kind of depth to it because this is supposed to be black in between here and you probably will probably have to get the ink going again in the pan but And like I said, you just want to darken it, it doesn't really matter. Just the ink on this pen isn't particularly being helpful. And we'll darken the rest of it with the um, with the weathering. So the next thing you need to do is reinstall the light lines. And just to recap, we have colored the ends of the light lines, but if you notice close here move the dog here from the light lens. Um, what we've done is there's just sections of it where it's um, the paint is not as thick so I'm going to actually take a screwdriver and just scratch off a tiny piece of the paint just so that the light from the bulb will actually go through the plastic lens and that will make the um, the whole thing is just a little bit brighter. Okay, and you can see there with the um, ink pen, silver ink pen, we're able to do it on the edges and so on. Now there is a bit of overlap here. The ink pen tip is kind of thick, so it's a little tricky to get this exactly right. Then make sure the two holes on the front are still clear. And we just drop this in like so. And you usually have to be a little bit careful with this because the um, extra paint will sometimes make it a little tricky to get it in properly. Yep, so it looks like I'm going to have to file that down. Okay, so you can see now I've filed it down a little bit, and that's how it's looking. You can see it already looks a good bit um, more defined, and if you need somebody to compare it to, we will. Here's the original. You can see there, it's a lot more, a lot more defined. Now you can see that the uh, silver here is a little thick on the bottom, you see you have to be careful how you apply that, but we can fix that with some weathering. But you can see here even just by doing the windshield wiper and the or windscreen wiper and the um, seal around here, it makes it look more, uh, a lot more realistic and predominant. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, basically reassemble this with the bogey. Um, before we do that, uh, the bogey is designed to work in a certain polarity. So um, basically what happens is when the train is going 
one direction with the power the lights come on when it's going the other way the lights off but since we've hard coded these to be red what we want to have happen is we want to have these come on at the same time the trains going forward um, and to do that we're just going to reverse the polarity of these um, of these right here okay so this is essentially um, what you need to do to reverse the polarity um, the diode here is what causes the, uh, the 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 light bulb to operate in the forward direction. So since we want it to operate in the reverse direction, we need to um, change the polarity of the diode. So what we've done here is we've moved this wire from this terminal to that terminal, and then just to test it, we've put the we've reversed this cable as well. So this part goes on this end, and then we touch this against the wheel just to make sure that it works. And then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to desolder this and remove this to the other side. Or you can just put together a new wiring harness and use this as a spare. But that's basically what you're going to have to do to this. So we'll solder that up shortly and show you the end result. But it's always a good idea to um, to test it this way, just to make sure that you get the polarity right before you actually start hacking it together. Okay, now that we have the Inner City 125 Demi Car pretty much um, modified up the way we wanted to, uh, just to recap, we've uh, tweaked the um, light lens here. We've put the uh, silver chrome trim around the outside of it. We've painted the inside of those lenses red so that when they light up, they light up red through the um, through the lenses. Remember, this is going to be a fixed um, power car going always in reverse um, rather than hooking it up with directional lighting. The directional lighting is a bit costly with all the extra LEDs and it's difficult to cram the space in there. And We've got so many of these on the layout, it's not going to be a big deal to dedicate some of these dummy cars to running in one direction. Um, you've also put the uh, black ram there around the um, the seal for the window as well as the black for the windshield wiper and you can see it's done a pretty nice job of that. Like I said, there's some uh, a little too much silver here where it's uh, the paint's run a little bit with the paint pan and that's just because the tip of the paint pan was a little bit too large. Um, and what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll cover that up and fix that with weathering. And then uh, we colored in the little dot here red. I know in later models it's up here, but if you look at the actual um, real HSTs, there's no piece here, so I'm guessing it's just kind of a mistake in their molding, but we'll leave it there, it's close enough. We put the uh, seal around there, we put the seal around this, we did the same thing on the other side, and then we just kind of loosely did this and filled it in with black so it looks a little bit more defined. And um, if I show you the end result on the one that we weathered before you can see there what we're looking for is that looks black this way but you look on the side there's a silver tinge to it or kind of chrome aluminum tinge to it and if you actually look at some of the photographs this has actually got that kind of tinge where depending on whether they're open or closed there's um, you can see the silver kind of color metallic color so in the next video uh, we're going to go and weather this with some weathering powders and um, then in the following video we'll show you the whole thing running on the layout. It'll probably take about a day or two um, after weathering it for it to let the weathering powders settle and, and so on. So hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully you'll see part two with his uh, weathering the Hornby Inner City 125.